All right, and what is e to the ln k? So that's just k. The whole point here is that e and the natural log are inverse functions of each other. They cancel each other out. That's the reason this was a good idea. So these are inverse functions and they cancel each other out. So this is how we could figure out the equilibrium constant if we knew the standard delta g. We might as well get an answer for that. Uh, let's try doing that on your calculator. It's possible to actually do that in one step on your calculator. If you know where to put in the parentheses, it might be a little tricky. Pretty huge, but that's what I got too. Okay, yeah. cool. I always get think I did it wrong. It was really general. But at least so <laughs> I didn't even get something. I had an order of operations issue, so I need to calculate. Say order what you got there. Okay. Yeah. So I mentioned that it is possible to do this all in one step, but we have to know where to put it in the parentheses. First of all, any time you have more than one thing in a numerator or a denominator, you have to show the calculator that by putting it in parentheses. I think you might have left out this set of parentheses on your denominator. Okay. I think you saw the other set of parentheses we need. We also have to tell the calculator that this exponent is one thing. There's multiple things in this exponent of e, so we have to put that in parentheses, although my calculator actually puts those parentheses in automatically for e. Okay, so, or uh, let's see, let's see where you're actually at here. Good. So your calculator automatically puts in the parentheses when you're raising e to a power. And that cancels out. Right. Can we close it out? Uh, let's see. Should we close it out? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's well, easy. here's the confusion. First of all, yeah. So if you're having trouble with this, it's always good to maybe do it another time without trying to do it in one step. But the problem here is um, you don't actually need parentheses for your numerator. The calculator is already going to treat that as one number. Um, so this extra set of parentheses is confusing you. Oh. Um, so here's what would really help. Um, put in the parentheses for the exponent in what you've written down. You also need these parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. OK. All right, so uh, let's see. Going through that here. So we don't want this right parenthesis because that would just cancel out this left parenthesis. You want to put in the exact parentheses that you have written down. So now you should put in these parentheses here for the bottom. That closes out the denominator. Now we need to close out the exponent by putting in another parenthesis. Good. All right. And now we all have this right answer. Okay. This one is complicated enough that maybe you're right. Maybe we're less likely to make a mistake if we try to break this up into multiple steps to go through it. Uh, but if you put in exactly these parentheses, you can do it in one step as well. If you're going to try to do it in one step, the best thing is write down ahead of time exactly what parentheses you'll need on your piece of paper, and then follow that on the calculator. Um, but uh, sometimes it can be confusing, so I know that a lot of students prefer to break it up into multiple steps, although it's possible to make mistakes that way too. So uh, what did we get for K? 1.45 times 10 to the 37. Which indicates this is a very favored reaction. Now, this is something that doesn't have any units. K here doesn't have any units that we need to worry about. 
All right, so this is a uh, highly favored um, reaction. Okay, so again, this is a pretty standard type of question that you might be asked. You can see that you would have to do a lot of work before you could actually figure out K. And one thing you have to know is how to um, isolate something that you're taking the natural log of. Well, the way to isolate it is um, by raising E to that power. Um, did this algebra make sense? I always get stuck with the E to the power. Like when you were talking about the inverse relationship and right. that one canceled, so it doesn't cancel on the other side? Like that's where I get confused. Like, yeah. So first of all, we could just memorize that these cancel because we can just memorize that E is the inverse function of the natural log. That's so the whole reason we used it in the first place. Now how is that different when you have the 10 and then you label? Because the log is base 10 and the natural log is in this base 10. Uh, okay. Yeah, so what does it mean that we're taking the natural log? That means we're taking the natural log with a base of E. Okay. That's right. Suppose we were taking, say, the log of x equals y. Well, this means that we're taking the log with base 10. So in this case, suppose we wanted to solve for x. If we wanted to solve for x here, instead of um, making this into the exponent of e, we would make this into the exponent of 10. Here we would use a base of 10, and 10 and log base 10 cancel each other out, just like e and log, and log base e cancel each other out. Yeah, yeah. So th this is uh, just our general thing to memorize: is e of the natural log of x is just x. All right, and that's pretty likely to come up because we have a bunch of formulas here that have natural logs that we might need to solve for. 